Your freedom to be you includes my freedom to be free from you. If you are exercising a right that cannot be infringed upon, then how can that right beget an infringement on somebody else completely uninvolved in the behavior? If person A and person B have sex and either create a child or an STD, how does that become the res how does person C become the responsible party? What for A and B? And how dare somebody if C says, "Wait a second, this is none of my business. I had nothing to do with it." So, they, you, what, what, what? So you want you want to starve the child? No, 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 no. I don't. I don't want to starve anybody. I'm not starving the child. A and B are supposed to take care of the child. They were the ones that asserted the right to create the child. They assumed that responsibility at the moment of conception. This argument cannot be broken. I dare you to try. I dare you to try to explain to me how when two people engage in behavior that a third person cannot infringe upon, that the results of that behavior now become the responsible, the product of that, of that behavior becomes the responsibility of an unaffiliated person who might also have children. If person A and per let me just use myself as an example. And m when I say my neighbors, I don't literally mean the people next door to me. But for the meta for the analogy, let's use my neighbors, even though they're not for real in this. If my wife and I have a child, and my neighbors on welfare have a child, does that mean if they're not paying taxes and they need resources, that my spending on children is now split between my child and their child? And if I disagree with the government making my spending on my child only 50 cents on the dollar, I'm a bad person?